Hey guys, Tyler here. Today I'm trying out Potionomics. This is a new game that takes the classic potion shop gameplay loop and puts an interesting strategy twist on it. My dearest Sylvia, if you're reading this, it means I'm dead, which isn't great. More to the point, it means I've died without an heir. Per the terms of Oswald's will, you are the lawful recipient of his property on the island of Rafta. Oh damn, this... <laughs> it's a very awful shop. <laughs> I was going to say this game actually has a lot of effort put into animations, which might be part of the appeal. This is me. We're like twins. Forgive me for the intrusion. I wasn't expecting to have the opportunity to act on Oswald's will so soon. It's a shame because he left behind such a substantial debt. The responsibility of the debt now falls to me. What, really? I didn't know that's how it worked, but I guess that's fine. I'll be making money now that I've got the shop. Excellent. Would you like to pay the full balance of 1 million gold now? <laughs> oh, good God. There's a contract. There's very fine print. I've invoked a soul binding, which transfers Oswald's rights and obligations onto you. Make your payments on time and this shop is yours. I'm confident that you have everything you need to succeed. In fact, here. I'll get you started. Sell me this old potion so I can be your first patron. Hey, it's a card game. So the interest is in the bottom left. Stress. 0% seems like a lie. So I could attempt to raise her interest in a potion, flail in my attempt to raise her interest in the potion, or blunder my way to in raise her interest in the potion. Let's go with a regular attempt. It's a potion. Wait, you knew that. What if I don't want to play these cards? Okay, I guess I'm playing these cards. It's a pretty good, probably. Wow, this is actually working. I th like you'll think it. Wait, no. Wow. Forty percent stress just by standing there. I mean, that's a little more accurate now. Panic, blackout, or despair. If at hand at end of turn increase stress by twenty. Oh, so I'm just gonna max out in stress, and I can't play these cards. So I lose. Well, I trust you'll get the hang of it. You have a full ten days before your first payment is due. I'll be seeing you. Good luck. All right. Strategize my way into enough money when it's selling potions. That seems to be the game of haggling. A voice from above. Oh shit! <laughs> it's an owl with a hat. Ow of my hip. I mean, hoot hoot. What are property laws like here? Because I'm pretty sure you're trespassing. Oswald never mentioned them, but maybe he's trying to weasel his way in. There's five competitions taking place over the next 50 days. A series of contests in which local merchants will go head to head in tournaments of artistry and salesmanship. And each contest has more of a prize. I see. So the five contests add up to a million gold. You and me, we're going to win. So finally, some gameplay. Here's the shop. It's cute. Now let's make some potions. And it seems there's also some sort of time system. So when I do things, I progress through the day. So I can't literally do everything. Everything, I have to pick and choose what's worth my time. A potion requires a minimum of two different magic infused ingredients to be combined and heated in a cauldron. Every ingredient contains one or more color coded and letter assigned magimins. And the ingredient is only the vessel, so I just harness the vitamins. That's what it is it's vitamins, but magic. So Faber has six reds. Magic Root has six greens, so you just put it in. So I need a one-to-one -one ratio of red to green, which looks like this. I've made a minor health potion. What if I just double the ingredients? Has become a little bit more dense? Oh. It's worth more at each checkpoint. Okay, so now I brew it, which takes two hours, or two time. In the meantime, I have some old potions in our inventory. Let's arrange the potions. And then they'll be ah, on sale when I open the shop. Very neat. The shelf itself will influence the purchases. You know, because it's not about the product, it's about how the product is presented for some sick, twisted reason. It's cost two time slots to open. It's now haggling. Raise their interest with out depleting their patience. Customers have negotiation of their own, so it's a competitive card battle. A peppy commoner. So let's take a look. We got 10 patients. If that hits zero, they won't buy the potion. 
not interested yet. They're thinking about complaining, which will increase my stress. Here's some cards. I can raise their interest by four. And if it's the opener, which I imagine is the very first card you play, I get to increase the effect applied by reel them in by 20%. Opener is the first card each turn. So that one's a winner. See what you're getting at. Now I got their attention. I can raise them in. So interesting. The cost is actually their patience. It's cost to patience, but it raises their interest to moderately interested. And now they're going to complain. So I have to prepare for their complaints. Mental armor, if you will. When I came in, I thought the potions would be super cheap. But I've got a bit of a block. Cool. Close the sale. Um, But hear me out. They have five patients. So is it really a crime? To do these? I guess it won't let me though, so I guess I gotta close the sale out. That's fine. They're very interested or moderately interested. 32 coins. Okay, so more of this now. He's going to just lose extra patience. So I have a pretty big deck. I have 20 cards in total. 17 plus the three I have. There's just duplicates of each, I see. So my hand actually stinks, because all I can do is raise his interest by four. And bracing myself doesn't even matter. So I guess I just end the turn. And under my face cam, it says that I get up one more card every turn. So on his turn, he's going to decrease the price of the potion. So I guess I'll set him up again. It's a good opener. And I have a thing that lets me draw one card. Reel him in for eight more interest. And then we're actually kind of running low on patience, so maybe I'll just raise the interest by nine and close the sale. It's down to four patients, and the price is about to go down. So maybe I should just not let that happen. Close the sale, see what I get here. It's not very interested, but it's still pretty good. That first hand stunk, though. And the third customer, he's gloomy, so he might be harder to sell, too. He's got two shield of his own. Blocks two interest. Oh, he's going to complain. Draw cards. Brace myself will be helpful. I should draw another card. I should draw... Wait. Yeah, I should draw another card. All right, so I can raise interest by seven. I'm almost tempted to just close it out now. Because also under my face cam, there's an option to close the deal. But this one actually gives me more interest. So this is how I would want to close the deal. And this increases the price of potion by 5%. I don't know. It just seems right because I don't want a chance not drawing that next turn. It's basically what it comes down to. I'd rather just take the guarantee rather than roll the dice for like a potential slight increase that might not even get me to another tier anyway. It's all about uh, managing risk because ideally there should be a way to win without risking and that's how I like to do things. It's a much more consistent strategy. If I am being completely honest, this narrative stuff in between just seems like a lot of filler. But hold on, shouldn't my potions be ready now? Let's see... They look ready. Let's bottle them up. So bottle. A perfect brew. First batch done. Why not make some more for the night shift? But I don't have any more ingredients. Oh, you have ingredients. How convenient. We're making mana potions. And once again, it wants a one-to-one -one ratio. So it's really simple. They take a longer to brew, so let's pump up the heat. Fuel, when added to your cauldron's fire, will reduce the amount of time it takes to brew a potion. So find fuel, speed up the fire. I have hay. I don't want to drop it in the cauldron. I think I want to add it to the fire. So down here, put it in the center. One shorter time. Good. Oh, they've added a deck builder option. I can just adjust my deck. New haggle techniques will appear here as you learn them. Drawing cards is pretty powerful, but I got to remove two cards if I want to add scheme. I mean, I could just substitute the weak card draw for the better card draw. And it seems like my deck has to be exactly 20. The question is, is that what I want to do? I think yes. I think Sylvia Think is definitely the weakest card in my deck. You lose one card to gain one card at the cost of patience. The other ones actually do things. And realistically, I want my deck full of cards that actively help me rather than delay the help. But I can arrange my potions now, of course. There's actually a lot of interesting management to this. Maybe have them on the edge, nothing in the middle. It's, it's symmetrical. Symmetry is attractive. So now let's see how these sell. They look like they're a lot more expensive than the previous ones. Well, I'm supporting a family business. Make me an offer I can't refuse. They're gonna force me to draw a stress card and raise my stress on the next turn. Well, let's set them up. And then draw a ton of cards. Okay, so 
Send him up only buffs reel it in if it's the first card you play. So, I mean, I'm still going to play this, but it's not going to buff reel it in. But, so, it doesn't really matter which order I do it in. And the reason I say it is because I want to do reel it in. And then just scheme again for three more cards. Because, ideally, if I can just close out the deal before they get impatient, that's perfect. Unfortunately, this didn't really happen. So, I need to somehow get 13 more interest. I think I might just press this close deal. Here's, here's what's going to happen. There's only three patients, right? I want to end it on this turn because otherwise I will only have two patients. And realistically, I can only spend one patience. So I should just play two patients worth of cards. I'm going to hope that right now I could draw the close deal. Didn't get it. So let me just make sure that like partially increasing the bar doesn't change anything. No, it doesn't change a thing. Now, the only thing I can do is complete the sale, which is honestly my best outcome yet. No one believes me. I swear I saw a dragon yesterday. That's crazy. I, I got closed out in my hand. What's this? Give me a stress and there's a debuff where stress st in increases by two at the start of the turn. Like, I'm just trying to stay with zero stress right now. I don't have the reel it in card. Reel them in. So I am really tempted to just close the sale. But ideally, I want to stay at the 0% stress level. Especially since they're saying like, oh, you have to decrease stress by doing things outside of haggling. It seems like stress persists over the course of the whole game. So even if I gain 1% stress, now that will probably stay for the next fight. Or maybe be decreased by sleep or other things that I don't want to have persistent by. So honestly, why not just get it to very interested, make a good profit, and... And check out because frankly it's what 10% extra money where we when we all know the real money comes from the contest I mean sure I'll probably have to use money to buy ingredients to make potions for the contest but 10% there's no way that's gonna be make or break there's no way it's evening so I definitely have the mana potions ready so a perfect brew you love to see it. You can sell these for the last block of the day. Brew a new set of mana potions in the meantime. Got crazy ingredients. That'll push our potion to the next tier. I hate to speed it up and then mana worm plants with 18 magimans. Hive slime with also 18. Four times 18 is 72 for a banger potion. So you plop it all in. And it's gonna have the right ratio and it's not gonna go over my cauldrons maximum I've noticed here of 75. So this is a common mana potion it takes up four time. Oh, and it'll brew overnight That's very nice Un until I realize like how decreasing stress works I think I'm gonna continue on the strategy of avoiding all stress at all costs. Okay gonna give me two stress but I have two shield drawing a stress card is not the same as taking stress So it looks like I'm just going to be reeling them in twice bracing myself and hoping that i can maybe make a little progress next turn so interesting even though i've played all the cards ending turn still costs patience and yeah here's the stress card if it's at the end of the turn well thankfully i've drawn three close it outs so my decision has been made uh hopefully this doesn't stay in my deck I would actually be heartbroken if it does well i have no choice unfortunately there is no progress on this but at least you know a, a sale is a sale your displays look so nice today Ooh, well you are just gonna gain a shield very friendly not a haggling customer cool let's see what i can do oh god i'm not drawing much helpful stuff at all here come on i've drawn two of my close it outs i can't guarantee i'll get them next turn especially since i've basically drawn all of my card draws so let's see if i can get anything more here more close it outs. Damn it, I would have drawn it. Well, now, now I've got to make this a one turn thing. Okay, this is fine. Can do all the interest raising. Set them up. Oh, and I don't think this will quite make a difference. I'll still do it anyway. And close it out. Yeah, that's tough. I really hate the idea of doing it over two turns. Like, I, I can't give the customer a chance to do anything. You just gotta <laughs> filibuster your way into making a sale. 
That's what I found. Uh, at least in real life. I don't even know if I'm talking about this game at this point. Like, when you're haggling on either side, you really got to just filibuster the other one. Make sure you're in charge of the conversation and they're playing on your terms. That way, you can get away with some sketchy price moves in your favor. Trust me, I actually know this sort of thing. I haggle for anything that costs more than a couple hundred bucks. Wait, you're not a customer, you're just a grumpy witch. Oh, this is a merchant selling magic ingredients. Ah, I hope I get to haggle to lower the price. A new card. Well, this is something that would actually work over multiple turns now. So for the three turns in a row, I get to raise their interest by eight. Now there's a benefit to it going longer. Wow, we actually feel successful. 401 gold earned. So I've got to have Three potions ready by day 10. A health potion, a fire tonic, and a mana potion. Oh, hello. A novice hero with an actual potion shop. That's right, we live in a D&D campaign as a side character. Does Foster the Formidable ever shop here? Or Docs the Defenestrator? I love that name. What is the point of this conversation? Oh, right. Yeah, I forgot this game's actually part dating sim. I actually do not enjoy <laughs> dating sims in video games. If I want to play a dating sim, I could just step outside. So they're introducing a bunch of people that could possibly be friends or love interests or something of that sort. I think the whole point of this conversation was to get evoke sympathy. Are we gonna learn that? Sympathy, yeah. So I block stress. Oh, and I get to increase all future interest gained by 25%. Honestly, a very helpful haggling tactics, I have to say. So this is just what's going on today. There's a higher amount of customers, but health potions are less valuable. Out of ingredients, make more... Po oh, can't make any more potions. Yeah, let's go buy some ingredients. What a cozy looking town. I'll go buy some ingredients. Yeah, you can hang out and gift to people because they're trying to touch all the bases. But listen, I'm here for capitalism. Oh, those are some cheap ingredients. I could just buy out the whole shop. So they were talking about how like health potions are kind of bad today. So realistically, I should just be getting some B's and C's vitamins. So why don't I just max out in both? Well, the reason is because th these ingredients might become obsolete, but whatever. It's so cheap that I don't really care. And honestly, why don't I buy these anyways? Because there might be a point where health potions will be super expensive. Hang out and give gifts to become better friends. Well, ranking up actually might be important to get good ingredients. Okay, fair enough. So this would lower my stress. So actually hanging out with people has two benefits. So maybe it doesn't hurt to have a little stress. I hope you'll tell me how much stress it removes even though I'm at 0% right now. So this takes one time pip, which is okay. Oh, uh, it doesn't tell specifics or maybe it will. Well, I can rank up which I'm curious about that. That also costs time, whatever that means. What a nice hangout. Oh, we got to learn another haggling technique. Got the upper hand, this one he pressed the attack. Ha, there we go. Uh, that was well worth it, getting more cards. I could use an advantage in the marketplace. He might fit the bill, use the deal. There's a total of four chocolatiers in this town. Each one of them gets out one free sample per customer per day. You can't be that lazy. I am lazy and I've got a lifetime ban from those stalls, all four of, four of them. I would love for some chocolates, but they use some unusual ingredients. Ah, oh, so possible future potion brewing stuff. All right, where do I buy monster ingredients? Oh, from the heroes, because they'll slay monsters. I give them potions, they get me monster parts, I make them better potions, they get better monster parts. And it just scales infinitely. Infinite growth, what could go wrong? Okay, so I need better time management. Clearly, I gotta figure out when I should be using my time for multiple things at once. Because brewing, you can do that and then go do other things while the brewing is happening, which was already a minor misplay here. That's okay. Let's go to the cauldron, bottle it all. At least they're perfect brews. Damn, 64. Oh, and I have a recipe book with more than just mana potions. New fire tonics, enhancers, poison cures. Well, I can't do that one. It requires D and I don't have the D, but I do have A, B, and C. So these all help out heroes. Gives them mana, protects them from fire, and increases the chance to retrieve extra loot. I do want the heroes to have extra loot, so I need a 3-4-3 three, three combo. So, like, I was thinking I literally do 3-4-3, three, and three, but there's not enough space for that. I could do a minor slight enhancer, but the ratios aren't perfect, and this is probably way worse. Eh, 
it gives me an extra star, so I have a chance of gaining one additional star on completion. Interesting. Or I could just make a more perfect potion, like a fire tonic. Requires A and C. Yeah, so this is, this is manageable. So I'll brew it, and then let's go set up shop. So let, oh no, I didn't deck build. I was gonna do that, I realized it at the last second. All right, that's fine. Let's get haggling. Oh, I've got a pretty good hand here. I mean, sure, they're gonna be increasing my stress, or I could just set them up. Reel them in. So the next level is 13. And I have two progress already, which means that if I want to sell this for more, I will have to, and I mean have to, increase the interest by another 11, which requires a banger hand. And actually, I might not even get close it out. What am I talking about? I have close it out now, just play close it out. Oh, it's not a 12. Well, okay, 10 more without close it out. That's actually a pretty big deal. I think that's realistically as good as I'm gonna get. There's a very real chance of me not getting more money from that. The actual odds are probably, if I had to guess, 80% or higher. All right, so I'll sell this off. So if I can block for three, that's fine. Ooh, didn't get this as my opener. Let's just try to make a mega turn if I can. Okay, this time though, I'll be taking 1% stress. Four patients, I'll go down to three patients. So I will have effectively two patients to raise the interest by three. That seems very likely. So now let's see it. What does 1% stress really look like? Well, I'm covering it up, but does it change anything mechanically? Nah, it just makes me moderately stressed. All right, well, I got reel it in and close it out. So, oh God. Couldn't make them more than moderately interested. At least I got good profits. Ideally, I want to have three potions out when I sell. It just hasn't happened to work that way. What I should have been doing was go to the deck builder. So Think Sylvia Think is the worst card in my deck by far. This is just the strictly better. Not only is it draw a card, it also raises interest by five. That card's nutty. Oh, and then Sympathy. Sympathy actually seems really good, plus 25% and two shields. I mean, that's strictly better than Brace Yourself. I kind of want to try Plant the Seed. Plant the Seed needs to be drawn in my opening hand though, because imagine if I draw this on the turn that I'm about to close out the deal, then this does nothing at all. I feel like Plant the Seed would do a lot better in a slow deck. I'm kind of more going for a fast deck. So let's go Brewing. I can bottle Fire Tonics. Five stars. And I could try making a health potion because even though it's the price of it's down today, it only lasts for one day. It might not be down tomorrow. Now nah, let's, let's make a mana potion. That just by default goes for more. So imagine the haggling and like time-based system of this game combined with the crafting of potion craft. That would probably be the greatest game of all time. Do you think this game will let me do one more shop open? Please let me do it. I don't have the time for it. Okay, so I really need to plan out my time more properly. I just didn't expect when I got to Quinn for there to be more time consuming things. But I guess I could visit Mint now just to see what's up. Hello, Sylvia. Mint's been approved to go adventuring. Ah, would you like some potions in exchange for monster parts? Choose an area for it to explore. Oh, wow. So you're the adventurer, but we'll be calling the shots because we make the potions. So there's only so many potions she can drink and there's a fee every time I send her out. So. Where does the adventure go? Well, I've only one option and that would be the enchanted forest. Oh, but this is cool. So the whole world can be explored. There's actually a lot of depth to this. Okay, so my hero has 10 health, three mana, capacity for 25 loot, and I can only put four potions in. So additional health. So the forest are just gonna, enemies are just gonna deal damage. Exactly 15 damage, so why not just give this many health potions? The amount of mana your hero has, each monster or obstacle will require one mana to overcome. So then I definitely want two more manas, which actually will perfectly let us clear the entirety of the enchanted forest. Ah, this is cool. Gonna dominate out there. Yeah, this is perfect. Let's go. Yeah, I, I love the uh, mechanics this game has. Wait, I could stop by Quinn while I'm out here? Because time is only deducted once I come back. But I don't think there's anything I can actually do here besides gift. Can I give her a gift of an ingredient that she sold me? I'll try Fayberry. 
Fuck, <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> Alright, fair enough, fair enough. I gotta give her a gift that I get from somewhere else. Alright, pretty good day. I lost 29 gold, but all things considered, I was also doing things. I think my time management could have been better. Not to be too much of a stickler, but it kind of stinks that, uh... The only way to realistically pay off your debt is by winning the contest. That means it's kind of just a binary pass or fail sort of shtick. What the? Muck Tuck, the walrus man. I love this music for him. I wonder if I might be of service to you in your endeavors. Like you, I am a craftsperson. My media are metal and all the minerals of the earth. My skill is unmatched. Surely he can make a real cauldron for me. You, yep, he's, uh, he's like, yeah, your cauldron sucks. I can make you a better one. I do want to be on the cutting edge here. I would like to put more than four ingredients in a cauldron. Please accept this cauldron as a token of my respect and as a sample of all I have to offer. Well, hot damn. I only regret that I cannot offer all my many goods and services free of charge. A huge cauldron is a work of art and art is meant to be freely accessible to all. I have to say the actual day-to-day -day dialogue for this uh, game has been pretty based. Like I actually don't hate any of the writing for any of the characters. It's more that just the idea of reading gets in the way of my motivation to strategize. So I've learned something new, pump up. Implies the interest applied by the next interest raising card by 50%. So as a combo heavy card, I would need the right deck to make it work. I would need a very, very strong interest raising card that probably costs more than one patience. Cause right now there's not a single card in my deck that's really worth it. Not even the two patience, seven interest raiser. So make money to visit him for better cauldrons. This will be very important. Awesome. So increased value for fire tonics, which I have two of. Yeah, so it's time to check out this new cauldron. Do I have two cauldrons now? Can I like simultaneously brew things? Gee, I hope so. So I can put this where? Oh, it seems like there's only one cauldron spot. So hold on, so that means I gotta go to brewing. Bottle these, which are four stars. I like all these increasing options. So now I can just swap it. Can I place this like here? You know, it would be nice, but I guess, you know, it needs to be overheat, so that does make sense. That's fine. Let's see what I can brew in there. So this can hold up to six ingredients. Hold up. So three of each. And we'll see how good this gets. So three stars guaranteed with two additional stars and a chance of gaining a bonus star. Well, this is nice. Out of curiosity, though, if I take out one set of ingredients, it doesn't sell for that much more. I spend two ingredients to effectively get eight extra gold. And I believe buying these ingredients cost 12. So strictly, it's not quite worth it, but maybe there's some hidden benefit to it that I may want to consider. So I'll try it once. Oh, and I can upgrade my shop floor plan. Like I could, ah, so I could buy shelves and that sort of stuff. So it'll be someone who can sell me better stuff for my shop. Damn, this is, there's, there's so much going on here. Oh, yo, I got these extra potions because they were unused by the adventurer. Well, how about I sell these expensive ones? This is cool. Today is a big money earning day. Like I think what I have to do is make all my travels at once and then just in between focus on brewing. So is this potion any good? Oh, nice. You're buying for me the fire tonic. You're gonna complain and gain shield. Well, so that means I can get away with reel them in and brace yourself. I now think Brace Yourself is the weakest card in my deck. Since I've seen that there is a card that's strictly better than it, it definitely makes me not like it. But either way, I blocked all the stress. I'm at 0% right now. Okay, this turn I pretty much have to win, right? Raise interest by five, draw a card. Scheme, oh yeah, we're gonna pop off now. You're just gonna lose patience though, so technically I could make this a multi-turn thing. Well, let's see, I could at least make her very interested with double set him up and then close it out. Especially since I've drawn most of my close it, close it outs, I might as well play it while I can. Like, it's all about thinking about the tears. Yeah, there was no way I was ever going to get highly interested, so nothing wrong closing it out there. That's a lot of money. Welcome. He's a picky artisan. Might be a tough haggle. Ooh. I got sympathy, which should block his complaint. This is actually a pretty good first turn, then. Sympathy will make next turn powerful, and I get to raise some interest. Oh, wait. Wait, that affects now. For some reason, I thought that would affect next turn. Oh, I misunderstood this. The one that um, 
raises their interest at the start of their turn is still kind of is just okay because again if i draw that one on my last turn that i'm gonna close it out then it does nothing for me but here at least i got to block his complaints too bad i don't get to keep that close it out in hand i expected fuchsia is that really that big of an insult <laughs> all right this is the turn i'm gonna get him though although yeah it probably is set him up draw a card raise interest by five all right yeah i'm definitely closing out this turn especially since I've got the exact, or not exact amount, but basically perfectly enough to just close the deal cleanly. Yeah, and there's no way I'm getting the next tier. Like, I, even though I d don't see it, it's just logic tells me I'm not going to make the next tier. I'm really happy with how I've played all these card fights. So you are going to complain and devalue the potion. Well, how about this then? I'll, I mean, this being an opener doesn't matter because I don't have real them in in my hand. So I guess I'll just go sympathy buff up the set him up twice and i've got time and my turn you're a tough nut to crack just gonna gain a shield well i got reel it in so let's send them it looks like i should actually very cleanly be able to get very interested oh yeah i have only three patients left uh, this just has to happen nice 500 gold let's go check out my brews so what does this look like it's a perfect brew for 62 gold that's nuts well why don't i just do it again the only downside is i'm pretty low on ingredients now oh that gave me three fire tonics hold up oh wow i am very glad i went for maximum then yeah, th it gives me an additional fire tonic with triple ingredients. Holy cow. Well, this is going to be the easiest setup of my life. And then let me think about my deck. I've discerned that Pump Up needs another strong card for it to be good. So maybe I could try planting the seed. Because this is really good if I draw it on not my last turn, but useless on my last turn. So maybe I'll try it. You know what? A another card I also think is basically fits that exact criteria brace yourself you know just getting two block is useless on my last turn but it's not useless on not my last turn but it does let me extend a turn however the way that losing patience over multiple turns works seems to benefit fast strategies over slow strategies so ideally instead of swapping out two fast cards for two slow cards i'm just gonna swap swap out two slow cards for two slightly better slow cards and then in the long run swap out the slow cards for the fast cards it's moderately better ish somewhat possibly so i'm gonna keep selling for the entire rest of the day Welcome. Holy cow, I got the set em up real min combo. Gonna complain and give me a debuff. You hate to see it? Well, but this is a nice combo. I re he doesn't actually have that much patience. I could just close it out now. Actually, I don't know what this guy's next tier is. Let's find out. 14. So I'm. Here's the thing. You might think, oh, I only need to, need to get seven next turn, but that's not true. I might not have drawn to close it out, which is extremely likely for me to not draw that card. Um, so I would also need an additional 9 on top of that 7. I would need 16 next turn. So I might as well take the no stress way. It's Quinn again. Don't know how you can be indoors all day? Money! Oh, you're buying more of the exact same potion. I'm really tempted to just run it back. Oh, is there a chance to get her very interested? A 16 interest next turn plus the shield. Who knows how big this shield is? I would guess like two or four. So 18 or 20 interest next turn with eight patients, effectively seven to work with. As crazy as this seems, I genuinely think close it out is the best card in my deck. I mean, just the fact that it also gives another 5% on the cost is nuts. I think it's just always good to be playing it safe. The reason why it's always be good to be playing it safe at all costs is because if the game requires you to take too many risks, then the game fucking sucks. So I'm choosing to believe that the game doesn't suck and that I can win without taking any risks, but instead just playing smart. We'll see though. Devalue and complain. Well, I do have sympathy at least, and I don't have set them up in hand. Let me see, what does your next tier look like? God, closing out is so good here. But I mean, I have a full extra turn. I'm not gonna be taking any stress. It's just the price will be devalued. I don't know how much it gets devalued. Hmm. 
Maybe I should learn how much it gets devalued. So I'm going to get plus 10% and plus 5% by playing this. Or if I don't play this, I get one more turn where I get minus 5 or 10 or more percent. Right, I'm going to do what I think is a bad play. I'm going to just end my turn right now. Let's see how much is decreased. 3%? Oh, that's it? Oh, well, it's good to know. All right, let's see then. I did happen to draw close it out. Let's finish him off this turn. Start by drawing some cards. Always press the attack here. Yeah, a one patience for five. So now I could just reel him in twice, which en might end up being a good play. But I will say I drew like a fucking god during this hand. Oh my god, I got a lot extra. 27% versus... Damn, this is actually going to be pretty sick. 42%. All right, so I gained 17% by taking the extra turn, but I also drew like a god. There's no denying that that draw should not be expected. That was a, 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 a disgusting draw. Probably one of the best draws I could have had. Uh, there, there was maybe a slightly better one, but not by much. So let's go check on those potions I've made. A perfect brew. Let me take a look at recipes here. A and B just makes me health potions. Too bad my dumbass gave away a Fey Berry for no reason. I mean, a minor potion, still fine. What if I just add in a Mandrake Root? Like, is there any experimenting where I could just come across a different potion? All that's happening is that it's telling me that it can't brew and it's still trying to make a minor health potion. So this one would actually make, but I could lose a star on completion. How about this one? Also lose a star. And this one gains two additional stars in completion. So we just brew it. Let's see. With my time, I think I just want to sell. Tomorrow, I could go travel. Final sale of the day. Let's see what kind of crazy deals I can make. I was going chill craftsman. This guy is going to gain a shield and give me a debuff to increase stress by one whenever a card is played. Oh, that's brutal. So I'll, I intend to just get him this turn. Especially since I'm drawing six. Yeah, I, I could just start popping off right now. Gain sympathy will probably pay off. Plus 25% is a big deal. Always going to press the attack, see what my options continue to be. Reel them in. Is technically worse than set them up, huh? Two set them ups is better than a reel them, reel them in. So yeah, I'm just going to finish them off now. Set them up as much as I can. Reel them in. Do this. A ton of tears. Holy cow. We're going to get more than highly interested. Super interested. 45% bonus. Am I going to reach the four figures today? Muktuk. Well met. Let's see. Ooh. I did draw set him up. Let's open with that. And I get to draw four. Let's uh, get the scheme going first. And I got real men. Oh, this is going to be a one turner. For sure. Let's draw more. See what I'm working with. Press the attack is better than set them up, but these two together are better than reel them in. So I will press the attack. All he's going to do is force me to draw a stress card. So I guess technically plant the seed is better. Well, plant the seed technically costs me two patience because I also have to end turn. You know, I'm just going to press the attack again. That's way better. And then I can reel them in and then close out the deal. Damn, I need something to like increase their patience. Hope I get to find a card that helps me do that. 977 gold. Oh, that was all of them. All right, almost four figures. A good day though, plus 605. <laughs> well, this was a productive day. Probably a good spot to end it. I could see three or four days per episode. It might speed up though pretty soon because at least we're hopefully starting to exit tutorial land or maybe not. What's your deal? I'm not a customer. My name is Roxanne. Oh, and she's also a potion maker. You know, I suppose that makes us rivals. What? <laughs> Holy shit. Oh, uh, don't look so alarmed. I'm not here to sabotage you. Tell me about the competition. All right. She's going to definitely compete in it and probably not going to tell me anything about it because we're literally going to be competitors in it. I'll take great care to eviscerate you before you get anywhere near that gold. Wow, so much for making new friends. <laughs> you went from good luck to I'm going to enjoy disemboweling you awfully fast. So, motivation to do better. Beating the shit out of the rival potion shop. 
that should be fun. It'll be a good spot to pick up next time. I'm actually enjoying this quite a bit. The dialogue is good, but it makes for a bad YouTube video. So I'll see you guys all in the next video. I uh, hope you enjoyed. Have a wonderful day and peace.